Welcome to the MLS Review Show. As the sun shined down on a busy soccer summer, the heat was starting to take its toll. As coaches began to sweat, transfers took center stage. With a full stock of league matches and a Gold Cup stop in the nation's capital, week 14 in MLS was burning up. This is the MLS Review Show. The Gold Cup's Group C finale took place Tuesday night at Livestrong Sporting Park, with both Canada and the United States needing results to assure a place in the quarterfinals. Canada and Panama kicked off the doubleheader in Kansas City. After a scoreless first half, Red Bulls midfielder Dwayne De Rosario gave the Canadians the lead, converting from the penalty spot in the 62nd minute. However, Panama found the back of the net in the 91st minute to end the match at one apiece. The result put Panama atop Group C and forced Canada to bank on a Guadeloupe upset or be sent home early. In the second game, head coach Bob Bradley dropped Red Bulls duo Tim Ream and Juan Agudelo out of the starting 11 in exchange for Eric Lehigh and earthquake striker Chris Wondolowski. Although Wondo wouldn't open up his national team scoring account, it was former MLSer Josie Altador who ripped home the game's only goal in the ninth minute and sent the U.S. into the quarterfinals with a 1-0 victory. The red, white, and blue would then head back to Washington, D.C. to take on the reggae boys of Jamaica at RFK Stadium later in the week. We made a lot of good plays, a lot of good passes to get to the final spot. Um, our finishing let us down. And um, that's just, you know, sometimes those go in and sometimes those don't, but we, we got to be better as a group in front of the goal. Obviously, we still think we're the strongest team in CONCACAF, so we still have to go out there and, and, and play hard. We need to play harder and better than we have in the first three games, that's for sure. You know, it's, it's tough when you're so close. You can almost see the finish line, but um, one little bit of lack of concentration, and this can be a cruel, cruel game at times. Two Eastern Conference teams attempting to climb up the standings opened this week's MLS play. When Toronto visited New England on Wednesday night, youngster Daniel Henry put on a solid performance in his first MLS start on Aaron Vinter's back line. Netminder Matt Reese made his 200th start between the pipes for New England and notched his 60-second career shutout as this one ended in a 0-0 draw. Following an uncharacteristic 4-1 win over FC Dallas on the road, Sporting KC were carrying momentum when they returned home to Livestrong Sporting Park on Friday night. However, waiting for them was the reigning MLS Player of the Week, Stephen Linhart, and the streaking San Jose Earthquakes. After deploying a 4-4-2 last week, head coach Peter Vermees reverted back to a 4-3-3, with striker Omar Bravo lining up alongside B. Raheem Diop and C.J. Sapal. Without Chris Wondolowski and Ryan Johnson, critics thought the Earthquakes would struggle to score goals. However, the Quakes have found the back of the net 13 times in the last five games, including a hat-trick from Linhart last week. San Jose was riding a six-game unbeaten streak, and head coach Frank Yollop decided not to mess with a good thing, leaving the lineup untouched. J.P. Delacamera and Kyle Martino were at beautiful Livestrong Sporting Park with a call. Ready for kickoff. Light blue uniforms belonging to Sporting Kansas City. They have the ball. Looks like quite a 10, actually. Stevenson, saved by Nielsen, it came straight out and cleared away by Sassano. When you take a ball on straight on as he's taking it and you hit it with that much knuckle, nothing a goalkeeper can do about it. The fan base has been amazing. The American Outlaws have definitely organized. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a bad play back. Zussi. Zussi getting right there, tries to get his first shot off. John Bush doing a good job of staying up, not committing to the shot early. Free kick, far side of the field from Zussi. Two in the wall. Over the wall it comes. It's a score for Sporting Kansas City. Look at how he whips this ball in. And Sapong, look at the athletic ability. He's got a defender on him. Burling grabbing him. Gets that left foot out. All he has to do with a ball coming in this hard is get contact on it and aim it towards the goal. And the pace will do the rest. Great finish. Zussi will end up with it. <laughs> Sasana Man. Could have been an own goal. It was that close. What great skill from Zeus. Look at this. 
Cuts it back. Great first time ball in from Sano. Mitchell almost knocking that into his own net. Leads it. Dawkins cutting. He has the shot. He went near post. Carby. Dawkins the shot. And a nice save by Nielsen. Short restart. Dawkins ripped this one. Look at it bend to that far corner. Sporting Kansas City just wants to hear a whistle. Beta Shore. That's it. Game over. Three points. Sporting Kansas City is a winner. Coming up on the MLS Review Show, Seattle travels cross country to take on a confident Toronto FC side at BMO Field. Hey, it's Charlie Davies. United, and you're listening to Extra Time Radio. The Extra Time Radio podcast comes out every Monday and Thursday on iTunes and Buzzsprout. You can also listen to each episode at MLSsoccer.com slash Extra Time. We're a soccer podcast. <laughs> and I have no friends. I like to tie my shoes. Well, well, we'll get back to some women's evening wear talk. You guys are too old. It's only for eight-year-old boys. What's wrong with that? Yeah, this is your tweet of the week. Janino's not going to win a game for you. They're a sign of the apocalypse. Fans, we want to hear from you. You're encouraged to email Extra Time at MLSsoccer.com or tweet at Extra Time Radio with any comments, questions, or reactions. Welcome back to the MLS Review Show. Frank Klopas looks to build on his first win as head coach in Chicago as the fire head to New England. But first, Toronto hosts a relentless Seattle squad. For its second game of the week, Toronto returned home as the Sounders ventured into BMO Field Saturday night. Five years into existence and no playoff appearances, TFC had hopes of reaching new heights this season. However, without a win in seven straight games, Aaron Vinter's side sat in sixth place in the East and in desperate need of three points in front of the home fans. The Reds' attack would get a boost as creative midfielder Alen Stevanovic returned from injury, but inform Alan Gordon was a late scratch when he failed a fitness test, being replaced by Mike on Santos. Head coach Ziggy Schmidt brought his Sounders north of the border after a dramatic 2-2 derby draw with Vancouver. Seattle goalkeeper Casey Keller had to wipe the image of Eric Hasley's stunning equalizer from his mind. Seattle headed into the match confident after posting a 3-0 win over Toronto in their first meeting this season, highlighted by a Brad Evans brace. However, unable to find a consistent score on the front line, Seattle would continue to rely on the plethora of attack-minded midfielders to create chances. Arlo White had all the action from BMO Field. Barmy conditions. Around 10 minutes or so from downtown Toronto, and we are underway at BMO Field. Quick throw in, it's a good one. Fasito into the penalty area. Mike Fasito on the left foot and he's hit the post. And he just hit the base of the post and went out for a goal kick. Look how close this was. Miscontrolled that time. Santos got a player inside of him, Urosovsky. Here's Urosovsky. And that is a foul by John Kennedy Hurtado. Urosovsky looking very dangerous there. Was about to slide the ball through to Plata. And this will be a card and it's yellow for John Kennedy Hurtado and it's accepted against the Seattle wall and Casey Keller here. Still just kills one, it's a good one, and it's just over the bar. Jurosovsky, good turn by Stavanovic, decided against sliding it through to Santos, but he collects the ball again, and John Kennedy is going to have to be careful here. Hurtado, that's a second yellow card. Hurtado can't believe it. He's going to be sent off, red. And let's take a look at it. This control. He did drag Stavanovic down, he kind of fell awkwardly into his leg. Across from Montero towards Fusito, it's not far away. As they try and steal a winning goal towards the end of the game, Silsma turns, possibilities here in the penalty area. It's another excellent challenge by Riley, brought out to Borman, chips it into the area. Here's Martina off the post, it's still in there and it's over the bar. Let's take another look on the half volley. And it was Plata on the far side. Riley, good energy from James Riley. Rosales, Plata in the back, free kick. Montero being very deliberate here. He recognizes the significance of this opportunity. Inside the final minute, Montero kills it! Goodness me, what a goal! 
Montero has done it! He's won it for 10-man Seattle! What a moment for Montero, what a moment for the Seattle Sounders. Inch perfect. Look at that, Fry got his left hand to it. He could do nothing about it. What drama late on once again from the Sounders. Good defending by James Riley against Plata. They need to knock it back to Borman here and send it long, Toronto FC. We've had the four minutes, and that's full time. Yeda Reyes blows the whistle. There's your hero tonight, Freddy Montero, with a quite sensational goal in the 90th minute from a free kick direct into the top corner. His third goal of the season, and he's taken all three points for 10-man Seattle tonight at BMO Field. After a disappointing result at home against Toronto on Wednesday, the Revolution would have another chance for three points at home as they hosted the Chicago Fire. Head coach Steve Nichols stressed one thing in particular after the 0-0 draw, saying, we need to score goals. With the loss of Usman Dabo and Benny Failhopper still a week or two away from returning, striker Raiko Lekic would have to prove his worth as the most dangerous player on the pitch. Fire interim head coach and technical director Frank Klopas would have to shake up the lineup again after a shocking midweek announcement. After less than half a season in Major League Soccer, Gaston Perari had been sold, completing a transfer to Mexican club Atlas. Klopas believed the move would give Chicago added financial flexibility, and reports of a new designated player on the way started almost instantly. With rumors swirling around the Windy City, Chicago would be focused on winning back-to-back -back games for the first time this season. Klopas restored Diego Chavez into the starting lineup beside last week's match winner, Christian Nazarit. Brad Feldman and Jay Heaps were on hand at Gillette Stadium. It will be Chicago in red, over the ball set to kick off, moving from right to left, and we are underway. Nazarit, a nice move by the Colombian, he toe pokes it off of the crossbar. Look at this cut, whoop, he gets right by, and Franco's not even in the picture anymore, and that doesn't miss by much. Mansali, now he fulfills his coach's wish, plays Nyasi delivery for Lekic. It reaches the day, and he gets over it, oh, punched away, that was on target. Good ball in from Nyasi, and look at Lekic take it down. You see a good clash, but what a save from Sean Johnson. Third year man out of Duke University for Alston. Heads it, Lekic shoots, oh, and goes just wide. Watch how Kevin Alston nods this down, and Lekic one time hits that, and look at that, the save from Sean Johnson. AJ Soares is down. Now he's back to his feet, but appears shaken up. Ooh, look at that. Shot there by Nyako and a good save from Reese. Just over Kevin Olsen, and that's some class, and Matt Reese up to the challenge. Good bump there on Nyasi. He kept his feet well, but Nyako digs it out and plays it into space for Oduro. One on one, going at Barnes. Weaving, shooting, and scoring. 1 0 Chicago. Good finish from the, from the Ghanaian. Look at this ball, back post, and it actually deflects off of Darius Barnes. You win the ball in the middle of the field like that. Uh, you know, the defense is always you know, unaware of the, of the forwards running. And, uh, oh, Lekic. Yeah. The flag stays down, and Lekic has the second goal. We all let that go because we thought he was going to be offside. And that's it. Everybody in a red shirt is saying, Silvio Petrescu, the referee. And as this comes off Phelan's foot, yes, a defender was slow coming up. It just reacted. He was going one way and the other, and a good finish from Lekic. The search serves it in. Oh, the header yeah. cleared off the line. The new guy comes through big time. It's still alive, and it's over. There was a lot of head on that. That was Baruch, and it, it was just going to go to the goal there. Oh, my goodness. Great save from Ryan Guy. Left footed strike and a great save by Matt Reese. Barnes with the long throw, last gasp for the Revs. Lekic gets it down, tries to turn, juggling act, strikes it, just wide! What a bid by Lekic, but he couldn't put it on target. Wow. Well, if there's a positive the Revs can take away from what's now a draw, it's perhaps that Lekic has gotten on track. Jay, the Reds wanted six points for this homestand, two games. They're going to have to settle for two. Coming up on the MLS Review Show, two Eastern Conference foes battle for position as Houston hosts the Columbus Crew. Every week, MLSsoccer.com provides you the opportunity to select the Goal of the Week winner. You can choose between the five nominees directly on MLSsoccer.com on the AT&T Goal of the Week page. 
You can also send in your vote by texting the corresponding goal to code 22442. Winners are announced every Friday, so make sure you vote early and often, keeping in mind polls close at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays. Winners so far include Juan Agudelo of the New York Red Bulls, Javier Martina from Toronto FC, and O'Brien White of the Seattle Sounders.